praise the Lord. Amen. My, my, my. Well, it's been good this morning already. What tremendous, powerful, life-changing preaching from Brother Bellotto. Thank you, Brother Bellotto, for the word of the Lord. Praise God. And that beautiful song we just heard, the old rugged cross. Amen. Yeah, I'm not against PowerPoint, but sometimes I feel like we need to roll up the screen and roll up the old song books, sing some of those old hymns again that have so much meaning to them. Praise God. Well, if you would turn in your Bibles with us today, we're going to read, <coughs> excuse me, from the book of 1st Timothy chapter number 2 thank you again Elder Hyler for the invitation to come and thank you for the wonderful accommodations the hospitality the warm welcome taking good care of us and uh, just am enjoying being here I, uh, I, I normally stay for a a whole conference but I uh, apologize I will not be able to be here for tomorrow uh, going to have to go home for a funeral so please excuse me but I'll be here through tonight's service looking forward to hearing my friend Elder Burgess preach the word of the Lord this evening praise God 1st Timothy the second chapter we're going to begin Reading with verse number one. Well, praise the Lord. Read down through verse number eight. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I want to preach for a little while this afternoon about being motivated and empowered to pray. Would you pray with me right now that God would help us the remainder of this service today would you pray with me God in the name of Jesus we are leaning up on you Father asking you to help us right now Lord God asking you to intervene by your spirit hearts these young people today God Lord would you talk to us today we need the help of the Holy Ghost we need the unction of the Spirit. We need the mind of God. I love you, Lord. I love you today, Jesus. I pray for your personal will to be done. Be careful to give you all the honor and the glory. In the lovely name of Jesus. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And you may be seated in the name of the Lord. I feel a current moving 
in the services here this morning, even uh, felt it for the service last night. I do believe that God wants to take us to perhaps places that we have not been heretofore. There are places in God that God desires us to go to beyond where we have already attained unto. And it's very probable that that is a part, if not the most important part, of what God has in mind for Own Course Youth Conference 2020. There's no telling where the Holy Ghost is going to take this group of young people before the service ends on Friday night and the last amen is spoken. I believe that God wants to help us to be more effective in the kingdom of God. And one of the most important ways that we can be effective in God's kingdom is by effective prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I don't believe that there's anything that we can do more important in order to promote the kingdom of God than to pray. Prayer is that important. And certainly there are many motivators in life, many ways that God uses to motivate us to pray, whatever it might be, however it might happen, that's good because we need to be motivated to prayer. Certainly trouble is one of the ways that God uses to motivate us to pray. And if it takes trouble, then so be it. But whatever it takes, God, I want you to keep me on my knees. I want you to keep me praying. Because we all understand that we can't make it without prayer. You cannot live for God without prayer. You will never be effective in living for God without prayer. So in the very beginning of our relationship with God, We need to make sure that we learn how to pray. We need to make sure that we build ourselves a prayer room at the very early stages of living for God. Before that you build an education, you need to build a prayer room. Before that you build an occupation, you need to build a prayer room. Before that you build a relationship with a young man or a young lady, You need to build yourself a prayer room. Before that you build any other thing in life, make sure that you build yourself a prayer room. And if you don't build yourself a prayer room, God knows how to build one for you. And if that's what it takes, then God, so be it. But whatever it takes, build us a prayer room, a relationship with God. We'll never overcome temptation if we don't learn how to pray. We'll never be able to find nor do the will of God if we don't learn how to pray. We'll never have revival without prayer. We'll never make it through the trials of life, the stress that we face in life without prayer. We'll never develop more of a hunger for God in our lives if we don't pray. If you find yourself without the desire to pray, there's only one way to get the desire back, and that's to make yourself pray until the desire returns. Prayer is the ultimate activity in living for God. We'll never have faith unless we learn how to pray. We'll never have an appetite for God nor for the Word of God 
if we don't pray. We find a very familiar passage of Scripture in the Old Testament in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verses 13 and 14. And the Scripture says, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. There are many passages of Scripture throughout the Word of God that are placed there, I believe, to motivate us, to encourage us, to admonish, admonish us, and to build our faith in prayer. However, in spite of all of the other motivators that we have that would admonish us and motivate us to pray, I believe that Jesus himself should be and is the greatest motivation for prayer. In Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1, the Bible says that he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Jesus never, as far as I can determine, told us really the purpose of a parable before he spoke the parable. Or the word never gives us the purpose of the parable except for this one. And the scripture distinctly says that he spoke this parable for one reason. And that was to get us to pray and to keep us praying, encouraging us to pray no matter what, not to faint. We know that Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus, was a man of prayer. Prayer was the number one priority in the life of Jesus Christ. He prayed in all circumstances. Prayer had priority over his social life. Prayer had priority over even his physical rest. Jesus was never too tired to pray. Prayer had priority over all of his physical appetites. When he was suffering, he prayed. When he was happy, he prayed. When he was popular, he prayed. When he was unpopular, he prayed. Jesus was a man of prayer. He prayed in the, in the times of great decisions that needed to be made in life. He prayed with all prayer continually. He was conscious of who he was and of what he had come to do. He heard the screams of hell with every step that he took in life. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7 tells us who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. It gives us an insight into the kind of praying that Jesus did. He offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. He was the most effectual and fervent praying man that has ever lived on planet earth. And he is our example. And we ought to follow in his steps. In Luke chapter 22 and verses 43 and 44, 
The Bible says that while that he was there in the garden of Gethsemane, there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him and being in an agony. He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It leaves us very strongly with the indication that Jesus became a little bit tired and weak while that he was praying and that there then came an angel from heaven that strengthened him to pray better, to pray more fervently. And at that time, after that he was strengthened by that angel from heaven being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. Oh, that God would put the deep hunger and desire within our hearts to pray. And then that when we pray, that we would feel that same strengthening of the the Spirit of God to help us pray even more fervently. How impacting would it have been to have heard the praying of Jesus? I'd like to have been there somewhere, Brother Lackey, to hear him pray. We do find that when the disciples heard him pray, they said, Lord, would you teach us to pray? We want to be able to pray like you're praying. We want to be able to see the results of prayer like we see the results of prayer in your life. What kind of a value does God place on prayer? How does God really feel about prayer? Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number 25 says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He ever liveth. This is referring to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Not while that he was here on earth. No, he was here on this earth for some 33 years. Just three years of ministry. Three years of earthly prayer, miracles, and teaching. And one tremendous act of dying and redemption at Calvary. And then he rose from the grave, was seen for some 40 days, ascended in to heaven. And now then, for over 2,000 years, he ever liveth for one reason, for one purpose, with one thing in mind, to make intercession for the lost, to make intercession for the lost. Now, we do not believe that there is one in heaven that is bowing before another one in heaven and praying and making intercession in that manner in heaven. We do not believe that there is a God the Son that's praying to a God the Father and making intercession in such a manner in heaven. If not then, then how does he ever live to make intercession? 
How is it that he ever liveth now to make intercession for those that are lost and without God? I believe that the scripture gives us insight and teaches us how that he ever liveth to make intercession. Romans chapter 8 and verses 26 and 27. We have already heard it once today, but let's, let's hear it again. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession. How does he ever live to make intercession? Only when he can find another human agent that is willing to commit themselves to intercessory prayer. For the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered again in verse number 34 of that 8th chapter of Romans who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us Again, we do not believe that there is one God at the right hand of another God. But we recognize the symbolism of the right hand of God. He's at the power, the power of God. He has the power of God. He is at the right hand of God. And he uses that power for this purpose to make intercession for us. The Holy Ghost wants to help us be intercessors. The Holy Ghost wants to help every one of us to be prayer warriors. The Holy Ghost wants to move within each of us, enabling us, motivating us, and empowering us to pray. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, let us, therefore, come boldly, Unto the throne of grace. We have a great high priest. That is passed into the heavens. And he ever liveth. To make intercession. Let us therefore. Who is it that's going to come before the throne? Who is it that's going to come making intercession? Let us therefore. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Let us be the ones that are used by God now in the ministry of prayer. Just like he was used in his humanity while that he was here on this earth making intercession, praying in the garden. With strong crying and tears. I do believe that the ministry of reconciliation has been passed on to us. I do believe that the ministry of intercession has been passed on to us. He ever liveth to make intercession. But the only way that it's going to happen is when there's somebody that's willing to give themselves to prayer. When there's somebody that's willing to commit their lives to prayer we are kings and priests unto God the Bible says 
He hath made us kings and priests unto God. Our, our ability that is given to us as kings is to rule, is to have dominion over the forces of darkness. But our responsibility and ministry as priests is to intercede. And we need to fulfill the responsibility of that of the king, but also that of the priest. We're going to rule over principalities and powers, but we will not rule as kings until we learn how to intercede as priests. We need to fit and fall into and find ourselves in the possession, in the position of the priest and intercessor, one that comes boldly before the throne of grace. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And we know that that's the sum and total of spiritual warfare. If we're going to fight the good fight of faith, if we're going to fight and defeat the kingdoms of hell, there's only one place and one way that it's going to be accomplished. And that's in a prayer room. That's in a prayer closet. That's in the spirit of intercession. That's that's accepting the responsibility and the ministry of intercession that God has for every one of us. Prayer is what accomplishes the work of God. It's through our praying that everything that Jesus did still happens. It's through our praying that everything that Jesus did and even greater things than this will still happen. He said, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, Name, I will do it. Praise God. I want to be more effective in working for God. I want to be more fruitful in the kingdom of God. And the only way that that can truly be accomplished is for me to spend time in prayer and intercession unto the Lord. The impossible does not exist with God. The impossible yields before continuous and relentless pray prevailing prayer in the name of Jesus. It may require all prayer and it may require all kind of praying at all times and by all means. But the opposition will yield and the victory will come and revival will be had if we pray. If we continue in prayer, God forbid that we should sin against God in ceasing to pray. God forbid that we should sin against God. What an awful crime when we cannot, when we cannot have a burden any longer and no longer have a passion for souls. When we can abandon souls to hell and let our churches rock on without revival. What an awful crime that it is against God that has given unto us the ministry of prayer and of intercession. Jesus gave two powerful parables on prayer during his time on earth and it's Luke that records both of them one is the parable of the midnight petitioner who persisted until he got bread and then he received as much as he needed and it was in that parable that Jesus said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. 
and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If we really believe that prayer works, if we really have faith in God, then how long are we going to continue asking? I would declare today that we're going to continue until. Because he said, ask and you shall receive. If we really believe that if we seek, we will find. How long are we going to seek? I would contend that we're going to seek until. Because we have the promise, seek and you shall find. If I really believe that if I knock, the door is going to open. Then how long am I going to knock? I contend that I'm going to knock until the door opens. Because he said, knock and it shall be opened. I want to encourage some young people this afternoon. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. And the message, and the message of the parable of the, the little widow woman and the unjust judge really drives it home to us again. He, that unjust judge did not regard man. He had no fear of God. But because that widow woman just kept coming day after day, she would not quit. She would not give up. She would not stop in her petition. Oh, that's the message that God wants us to hear again today. We've got to keep praying. Never quit. I would that men would always pray and never faint. Hear me today. Prayer is not a push button proposition. It's not spasmatically now and then. Prayer is prevailing. It continues relentlessly knowing that the waiting is not worthless. Prayer is binding on earth what is already bound in heaven. And prayer is loosing on earth what is already loosed in heaven. Prayer does to hell what hell wants to do to us we've got to keep praying and keep praying and keep praying Woo. prayer can do anything that God can do Prayer can go anywhere that God can go. Nothing lies beyond the reach of prayer, but that which lies beyond the reach of God. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes anything. It will be forever true that the most powerful agent that we have to do the work of God on earth is prayer. It's prayer. It it hasn't changed in 2020. It's still prayer that gets the job done. It's still prayer that brings revival. It's still prayer that touches the hearts of men. Hallelujah. Amen. And not every one of you young people is going to be a great preacher. Not every one of you young people is going to be a great singer or a great musician. But I want to say that any and all of you young people can be a great prayer. That is open to anybody. It doesn't matter whether you can carry a tune in a bucket, you can pray. It doesn't matter whether you can get up behind the pulpit and speak or not, you can pray. It doesn't matter what else you might be able to do or what other, other talents that you might have or not have. You can pray. And there's nothing that we need more in the apostolic church in 2020 than some young people that will get under the burden of prayer. It really doesn't matter whatever else God calls you to. 
It doesn't matter whatever else God calls you to. The most important aspect of your calling is prayer. If God calls you to be a preacher, the most important aspect of your ministry is not preaching. The most important aspect of your ministry is your prayer life. If God calls you to be a musician, the most important aspect of your talent is not tickling the keyboards. It's in a prayer room talking to God. If God calls you to be a singer and he's given you a talented voice, the most important aspect of your calling is not singing. It's praying. God, give us prayer warriors. God, give us prayer warriors. Listen to me. Listen to me, young people. We've got a, we've got a lot of young people lined up wanting to play the drums. Wanting to play the guitar, wanting to play the bass, wanting to play the, the the organ or the piano. We've got a lot of young people lined up wanting to sing in the choir, wanting to be one of the praise singers, wanting to be a special singer, wanting to lead the youth service. Oh, I would that we had a long line of young people saying, just let me be a prayer warrior. 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 Hear me. Hear me again. Playing the drums isn't nearly as important as praying. Playing one of these musical instruments is not going to get nearly as much done in the work of God as prayer warriors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't I don't care how successful you are at playing a musical instrument. If you're not a prayer warrior, you're a failure. I don't care how successful you are at singing beautiful hymns and songs. If you're not a prayer warrior, you're a failure. I don't care how good of a speaker you are. If you're not a prayer warrior, you're a failure. On the other hand, I don't care what else you can do. If you're a prayer warrior, you're a success. If you're a prayer warrior, you are a success. It doesn't matter if you can sing or not, preach or not. It doesn't matter if you can play a musical instrument or not. If you are a prayer warrior, you're the most important saint in the church. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, would you help us here today? I really, I really believe and I really feel that God has turned to an angel with an ink horn in his hand. And he said, go down there at own course. Because I've got some young people I want to put a mark on. If you hear a moaning, If you hear them groaning, put a mark on them. 
Because that's the ones I'm going to use. That's the ones that I'm going to use to bring about a great apostolic restoration. That's the ones I'm going to use to bring about a great apostolic Holy Ghost outpouring. That's the ones. And he's looking. He's looking right now. He, he ever liveth to make intercession. But in order to do it, he's got to find somebody that'll say, use me. God, would you use me? You want to make intercession, Lord, use me. Are you looking for somebody that you can use to pray? Are you looking for somebody that you can use to intercede? Here I am, God. I, I, I give myself to you. I want to commit my life to you today. I'm, I'm going to make a consecration to you today, God. God, I'm going to be the prayer warrior you've been looking for. I'm going to be the intercessor that you've been looking for that you can use. with it young people whatever you feel that the Holy Ghost would have you to do with it I've delivered to you what God put on my heart to talk to you about today do with it whatever you feel that God would have you to do with it oh God oh God oh God I want I want you to hear it again you hear it again there's an angel in this place God has sent an angel to put a mark on some young people that he wants to use in intercession. He wants to use in intercession. Woo. Come on, you need, to, you need to reach for a place in prayer that you've never been to before. A doubt in the Spirit in prayer. A doubt in the Holy Ghost. Come help me, Holy Ghost. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities and maketh intercession for Come help me today, Holy Ghost. Come help me today, Holy Ghost, to go deeper in prayer than what I've ever been before. And help me, Lord, to make that consecration that I'm going to do it consistently. Oh, yes, God. I give my life to you, Lord, to be used as a prayer warrior, a prayer warrior, a prayer warrior, a prayer warrior, a prayer warrior. out into the deep let's get out of the ankle deep water what do you say let's get out of the knee deep water wait on out young people come on you wait out in the holy ghost wait out in the spirit 
Let the Spirit pray through you. Let the Holy Ghost use you to pray. Wait out there beyond that low and deep water. There's waters out there deep enough to swim in. And that's where the Holy Ghost is trying to take you. Let the Holy Ghost, let that current of the Spirit move you out into those deep places of prayer where that you can be an intercessor.